afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. This is Pack Chats, <laughs> professional artist chats with professional arts. Uh, well, I mean, with arts professionals. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> Um, the Patrick Arts Council is really excited to partner with the Patrick Medford Library to offer these um, little talks for free to artists, so thank you so much for joining. If you were with us last week, you would have seen a uh, live Q&A with Professor Giordano about writing your artist bio. Um, if you missed that, it's no problem. You can find it actually on our YouTube. It's there forever, so you can keep re-watching it. Um, and soon we'll be posting the Q&A session too. So if you missed that, you can kind of see the questions that other people had um, that might be your own and have them to be answered. Um, but today we're here for writing your artist statement, another very important piece of the artist package, right? Um, almost all of our applications, no, it's fair to say, I'm sorry, all of our applications, <laughs> I know from the Patrick Arts Council, always ask you for your artist statement, your bio, and your artist resume. So we're offering these chats to try and work you through all of those. Um, if you have these pieces of information already written, these talks are great to refresh them. So it really um, doesn't matter what stage you're at in your career, it's going to be helpful information for you. Um, so today I want to thank Professor Giordano for being here with us and for her awesome video that she made for us. You're welcome. Happy to, help <laughs> out. Happy to be involved. <laughs> and we're going to get started with a couple of questions that we thought could um, kick off our chat today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat. If you're watching on Facebook Live, you can pop your questions there also. I'll be bouncing back and forth to um, pick them up and get them answered for you. So before we begin, I'll just hand it over to Professor Giordano to introduce herself a little bit, and then I'll kick us off with our first question. Okay, sounds good. Um, I'm seeing things are a little spotty, so if I start cutting in and out, just please someone raise their hand. I don't okay. know, I, 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 think, I think we're fine, but I just did for a minute. I know, I saw it, yeah. No, nope, no worries. Um, so hi, welcome everyone. I am Professor Alexandra Giordano. Um, I also go by Sasha. It's the Russian nickname for Alexandra. So if you see that written on anything, I'm one in the same person. It gets a little complicated and confusing. Um, sorry if my the lawnmower is a little loud right outside my window. I hope that you're not getting distracted by that. Um, at any rate, so I kind of go by both. That's always, that does present a problem with my writing, but we can talk about that at a later time. Um, I'm happy to be here. We did have um, our artist bio talk last week, and now we are gonna focus on writing your artist statement. Um, a little bit more about me is included in the chat. I see that Beth is posting <laughs> that, and I have an extensive background in the arts. I worked at the Metropolitan Museum of Art for many years. I teach art history at multiple colleges. My undergrad is a, in a, is a BFA, my concentration is painting. And recently I've been kind of doing some uh, research on World War II and artists that were purged um, and kind of labeled as degenerate artists. So that's kind of where my focus is right now. So I get that art is like a, it's a way we're, it's a long path that we're on, right? It takes us in a lot of different directions. So welcome. I think we're going to get started with some questions, right, Beth? Yes. Yeah. So our first, our first question today, or it's not really a question. It's going to be Professor Giordano's recommendations for do's and don'ts for your artist statement. So our do's and don'ts, Professor Giordano, what are they? Right. So we're going to start with that. I want to remind you again, for those of you maybe who were not here last week, maybe you were, I'm reminding you that your artist bio is about you right? Um, and about what you bring to your art and how someone can view your art. And then by under, by knowing a little bit about you, they understand your work in a different way. The writing, writing the artist statement is about your work. All right. So that's a, that's a difference between the two of them. And when you're writing your artist statement, one of the things you want to think about is what is not apparent in your work. So let's say I look at five pieces of artwork and it's abstract 
or um, there's an obvious theme that that kind of bounces out from the work. But what is not? What do I not know, and what do I need to know? What are your influences? What are your themes? Is there a political influence that you have? Is there something a larger, you know, kind of esoteric comment that you're making in your work? Do you deal with memory? Do you deal with something kind of intangible that is kind of like your north star in all of your work? So, again, I'm right. I'm reading the writing, the artist statement, and it gives me deeper insight to your work. When you are also doing. Um, do, you know, do's and don'ts. And when you're writing your statement, you always want to do first person. All right. So that's, this is when you can do I, me, or my. All right. When you're doing your bio, you're talking in third person, right? It's he or she, but your statement is I, me, or mine. And then again, really, again, focusing on uh, what's not apparent, themes and issues, and doing it in, in first person in your voice. Those would be good ones to kind of, you know, start with. Um, do we want to go right into don'ts? What, I not? think so. Let's go right into don'ts. Let's go right into don'ts. And of course, we can back up to this if people have questions. Um, one of the first things that you want to really make sure when you're doing an artist statement is you don't want to use art speak. And when I say art speak, I mean, you don't want to do anything that's too pretentious. You don't want to write that is like way above everybody's head. And a good example about of this is that, you know, I teach survey art history classes, right? And I, the first question I ask my students every single semester is, have you taken an art history class before? 90% of them say no. So that means I have to watch my language. I have to remember, watch my language, haha. But really I do. I have to make sure that I'm speaking to a really wide audience about art. So that's a really good thing to remember in your artist statement. I know you know a lot. You know that you know a lot. But keep it so that it's an easy, comfortable read for, for anyone with any background. Um, don't just describe your work. I mentioned this last time. Show don't tell. In your statement, you don't want oil paint. When I use oil paint, I like to use a lot of linseed oil and thin out the paint. You, you don't want to take them through a step-by-step -step of, of your process or anything like that. It's more, um, again, I'm going to use the example of memory. If, if you think a lot about memory in your artwork, if that's something that's really important, how do you describe that in your artist's statement, right? How do you how do you touch upon the themes or the issues that are like your DNA or your fingerprint, right? Like that's a good way to think of it. Like what's the DNA of the body of your artwork and how do you put that into words? So don't just describe um, like you would, you know, um, giving formal analysis or something like that. Another thing to think about is avoid cliches. So now this is a little contradictory, right? I said, don't use art speak, don't use too much artist language, but you also don't wanna use anything that's too trite or too kind of ordinary. So in, I have some examples for you. I can I can give you a few. Um, you don't wanna say, thing like, th say things like, well, my art depicts the calm before the storm. So what does the calm before the storm really mean? It really means like tranquility, right? So use again using a thesaurus we talked about this last time get to the core of what you want to write about if you want to say that it's about the calm before you know before danger rushes in then use words like tranquility um don't say things like only time will tell because what does that really mean you're really touching upon anticipation aren't you you're t only time will tell only time will tell when we can all be back outside and seeing each other again there's anticipation with that, right? So, so think about words and, and specific words instead of like just language that is kind of common that everybody's used to. Um, another thing too, like opposites attract. You might even want to say that in your statement about yourself. Maybe you have conflict in your work. Maybe there's contrast. Maybe you're, you're really one way and you use a material that's kind of, you know, something you wouldn't expect, someone wouldn't expect you to use. But then, then talk about those differences. Don't just say something lighthearted, like opposites attract. So uh, I think that's a good start with like do's and don'ts with your artist statement. Fantastic.
Um, just a reminder for all of you here with us and on Facebook Live, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat or in the comments um, on Facebook. Um, but my next question has to do with the length of a statement. So we talk in the video about um, having various size statements. You're often asked as an artist to provide a short statement, a medium statement, a long statement. What does that mean exactly? And, and how many, like, what would be the word count that you could give us to use as a guide when someone's asking for um, a short statement, a medium statement, or a long statement? Right, so great question. Um, and a, a lot of the times when you're applying for something, they're going to give you a word count. They're going to say, in 150 words, give us an artist statement. But before I get into the specific numbers that you can write down, I want to go back to the video that we posted last week and remind you, like I think it was on, on the, one of the first slides, I said, when you're, when you're trying to write an artist statement, just write. Right. And I said, I call that as unattractive as it is throwing up. Right. That's what I called it in, the, in it. That's what I do. Right. I still to this day, if I have to write something, I just write everything down. And I mentioned this when even in regard to the bio, don't throw anything away. Right. That that's kind of like that's kind of like all of the language that you can pull from. So anything you write, hold on to it. Any ideas that come first, jot them all down and save them. So when you have to go write a short statement, which would be somewhere between like 75 and 100 words, right? don't be surprised if you're asked to, to summarize your important, unique body of work in 75 to 100 words. That would be considered a short statement. And that's when you want to go to anything that you've written before and really kind of pull out the essence of your work. I think, I think we'll talk a little bit more about that later. I don't want to get, get off topic because I want to answer the questions about medium and long. If you're asked to write a medium artist statement, you should expect to cover that in about 250 words. Mm. And these are, the, these are more challenging. The shorter ones can definitely be more challenging. And a long statement would be somewhere around 500 words. Usually the norm is you don't ever want to go beyond a page. So that 500 word is going to cover about, you know, one page of writing. And that's a little bit easier. You would break that into probably two paragraphs, top. Right? No more, you don't have like two, three sentence paragraphs. It'd be like two paragraphs for a longer one, tops three. So any other questions about that? Does anybody have any questions about that yet? I might, something might come up later. Sure, sure. Nothing on Facebook yet. Okay. Um, but we can go into our next question, which is, okay. um, oh, oh, what is, what is the one thing or one of the major things that every artist statement should include, like above all else, like every statement's going to have this. Okay. Yeah, this is, and this is, I think this is probably going to be one of the most challenging things to come up with is to really come up with one bold statement that really kind of expresses um, the chords of ideas that kind of, run, or the undercurrent that kind of runs through your entire body of work. Um, and that's hard, right? To come up with this really strong, compelling first statement that again, kind of summarizes the DNA or fingerprint of your work. I had a really smart professor once say, and I, be I believe this to be true, you're always painting the same painting. No matter what material you're working in, no matter how you change up your iconography, your material, there's there's something in you that that you're kind of always speaking about. What is that, right? And that's that's the sentence that you want to kind of pull together. You also might find that that sentence is the same sentence you use in short, medium, or long. So if it's a short statement, you're describing it with you know obviously in fewer words, and then you can expand upon that on the length. I'm going to give you an example. So I was working with an artist, and in fact, I mentioned her in the last lecture that we just gave, the last workshop, Kelly Bell, right? And she was really kind of struggling with her artist statement, and we were talking, and it, it was kind of going off in a lot of different directions, and we needed to kind of synthesize things, hone it in a little bit. And basically, you know, in speaking to her, the bottom line was that her art is about a message of hope. And, and that's what it was. And listen, she's a graphic designer, 
right? So she has clients that she works with professionally in a commercial aspect. She works with light. She works, you know, kind of like these, she does these light projections. She does, and she works on a lot of different materials. But as soon as she said that, it was, it was abundantly clear that that was exactly what her work was about. And that's exactly what her artist statement should be about. Beth, you know her work, right? Yeah, and very well. It's just, there's a happiness and there's a hope. And she yeah. deals with social issues. You can't miss Ooh. it. What's up? You can't miss you it. You can't miss it. So yeah. right, so even when she's dealing with like a social issue of like a, de a, a, a neighborhood that's like kind of going through gentrification and something kind of heavy like that, there is this undercurrent of hope. So really try to think about that. Even if you, you know, sometimes you almost want to do like automatic writing. You can kind of do that. That's a good thing that you can do where you're thinking about your work and just come up with one word and list maybe 10 words that pop into your head um, about what your work is about. You could probably going to be able to cross off like five or six of them right off the bat. And then you're probably going to see a relationship between the other three or four. And, and that's how you can kind of attack that first sentence that's really important for an artist's statement. Sorry, that was a that was a long answer. No, that was perfect, that was perfect. Um, and then I don't know if you want to use, you have another example. If you want to use it, it's your own work. Uh, you know what, I didn't get I don't have that printed out. I don't oh, have it printed you? out, I'm so sorry. Don't worry I, about it. I, I had I was having massive problems with my printer. Oh, right no, no, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I missed the memo. Um, um, okay. But we can so, post it. Why don't we post it? We can totally post it. I'll post it as a follow up to the video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, our next question is: What if you don't know how to decide um, what your body of work is, or what work belongs in it, or does not belong in it? Um, this is especially helpful to artists that are younger in their career and, and they're not sure what that means or even how to select work sometimes. Right. That's tough, right? Because especially if you're, if you're new at this, um, what I always think about art and we were even talking about this a little bit, Beth, like to me, art, art is community. Like to me, that's what art is. It's about community. But then in order to make art, you isolate yourself. Right. So there's this like back and forth between this idea that you need a community to view your work and, you work. and there's many different levels of community in art, but you do it by yourself and it's so private and it can be so personal. So a good thing that you can do is to put together a group of friends, like reach out to your art community. Um, I know PAC does PAC crits, like a critique. So this is a great way yes. where Right? Yeah, go pack. <laughs> we have some of our pack crit ladies there. Awesome. I don't know if they're in the right spot, but I'll do that. <laughs> um, yeah, pack crit is a great way if you have work and it does not have to be complete work, but it's something we actually started pre-COVID and, and we've been doing them virtually now. And so you can just follow on Facebook and see when our next one is. We've been trying to do them every two weeks. Yeah, that that's really important because, you know, I've sat in on critiques and artists are like, oh yeah my work is about this and 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 i'm thinking inside my head no it's not that's not what your work is about you just don't want to say what your work is about you know and and i've been in situations where i think i'm the only one thinking that and then maybe someone a little bolder than myself will say really because i think your art's about this and sure enough four or five of us within a group will say yeah that's that's the bones of your work so I think it's really important to build an, a community and go to your peers. Another thing you can do is write, you know, those those two or three compelling statements about your work and show someone who you trust, um, maybe even two or three people if you can, show them your artwork and then show them what you've written and see if it equals, you know, see if there's a marriage between the two of them. Because ultimately, that's why you're doing a write, uh, writing an artist statement, right? It, ultimately, you want someone to read it and to understand what is your guiding light, what's your north star, what's what's the work about. Um, I know a while ago, like when I was living in, I was telling Beth about this when I was living in Babylon, there was just a bunch of us. We just got together. I, it was like so organic. I don't even know how it happened. And we we kind of got our way into a high school, and we would meet like once a week or something like that. And we would bring artwork and we were all new. Like we were all 
like right out of college. We were young. And that whole process of having a conversation about, you know, my work, speaking about other people's work, it was just a really great way to understand what we were looking at. You know, so that's another good thing. Um, keep an eye out for PAC chats, another plug for PAC. Okay. Um, but maybe something where we're kind of having a sample workshop, right? Where you can bring in. Yeah, we'll be doing one. Yeah, and maybe kind of like create that kind of environment where where mm -hmm. someone's sitting down and looking at your work. That's that's just really important because again, that kind of is contrary to the whole thing that we stay isolated, right? We make our work and we're in our heads and then we have to write about it for everybody else to see. So before you put that writing statement stating out statement out there, you know, get together with your peers and have that conversation first. It's really, really, really useful. I can't stress it enough. Perfect. Well, so now we have another question. This question um, comes from one of our guests today sure. and it's about the statement changing. And so this statement right. would change as your work evolves. And mm -hmm. maybe you could just talk a little bit about that. Definitely. So, um, so like I said, I, I mean, I, gosh, I've been making art for like 25 years, so I can relate to that. I think we all can in many ways. Um, you can always, uh, you should always address changes. I, I do believe, like I said before, there's always going to be some kind of undercurrent, some theme, a uh, political bent, um, some kind of lens that you're always looking through. I, I don't know if we change our glasses that much, right? Um, your materials might change. You might change your style somewhat. You might change your genre, the iconography. Um, and of course, if your theme changes, yeah, you should most definitely update that. But if you're always thinking, I'm going to go back to that idea of like memory, the idea of memory or personal narrative. Like for me, that's really important. So no matter what I'm making, um, it always kind of comes through in my pieces. Um, I was I was having a thought too about this. Um, some of my artwork is in the background. You can kind of see all of that pretty easily. And I do a lot of work. There's some one over here. I do a lot where like I compartmentalize images in boxes. And that's the part that relates to this idea of memory and how we remember things. So like this piece here with the little elephants here is like 10 years ago. I don't know if you can see that one up here with the red poppies up top. Mm -hmm. That's from like last year, right? So I'm still using those little boxes. But when I wrote my artist statement about my new work, I was really obsessed with these frames that I was making because those frames were all handmade and they all had to do with this idea of not using something that was mass produced. And so, so like there's like one or two sentences about memory, but I updated my writing statement to kind of incorporate these new ideas about found objects and reusing things and having things be handmade. Does that answer that question? It does. It's okay. perfect. I see some people nodding their heads, so that's yeah. good. You can see them. Okay. And just as a reminder, everybody who's here with us and on Facebook Live, any questions you have, you want to pop them into the chat box or on the comments on Facebook. Um, do we have actually any questions for anybody out there? We could go to one of your questions next. You want to do that? That would be good if anybody has any. I don't have any in the in the chat box yet. Okay, maybe everybody's still thinking they're taking it in. Yeah, that's okay. Let me check our Facebook um, before we do our last question. And you may still come up with something after that and we can address it. That's not a problem. Um, but really, our final question was um what would be your last like major piece of advice really for for all the artists i mean you you've gone through so much with us but you might have one last thing so the last thing i guess kind of is repeating what i had said you know before um in the sense where you kind of want to create this round table right where you can kind of like talk to other artists or it and you know what honestly even talk to people who are not artists. Show them your work. This is kind of a two-part answer. Um, show them your work and show them the writing statement you have. You know, one thing to think about is that when you and I, I always, I always knew this, but I've seen, I've seen it actually play out. Is that when you're applying for something, a residency, a grant, whatever it is, a lot of the times the people who are reading your artist statement are not from your same discipline, 
right? So they don't have the exact same background that you have. You think like, oh, we're, they're in the art field. They're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. And that's not always the case, right? They can be have a lot of different backgrounds, be from a lot of different fields. So it's also good to have non non art people <laughs> read your statement and look at your work. And then one of the things that you really should do, the best thing that you can do is kind of like, look at your body of work, look at your recent work and pull three pieces out and put them in front of you. And look at those three pieces. And again, go through that exercise of like, how are these pieces cousins to each other? What's the core that connects them? How are they related to each other? Because again, remember the artist's statement is about what someone doesn't see when they look at your work, right? Like, like I don't know if you, like the, those three elephants in this circular kind of orb that I have, like that's all about memory. It's all about this childhood experience. So that's important that you kind of create that narrative in your statement. But you wanna be surrounded by your art when you do that, you know, especially like your mo more recent work that you're writing about. Um, so that would be a, a really important thing to do. Not like, not like you're just thinking about it and you're in your head about it. You're sitting in front of your work and that's kind of humbling, right? Cause you kind of really expose yourself. You can really expose yourself in your work. And now I'm asking you to write about that, you know? <laughs> so the more honest you are and the more, uh, true you are, you'll, you'll find that connection. Um, Hope that was that, perfect. Okay, good. That answers that. And we have a couple of questions here in the chat box for great. you. Great. Terrific. Let's see what we have. Okay. So our next question is from Patty. It's great. Um, is it okay to reference other artists' statements? Uh, I'm sorry, other artists who are influences in the statement. So that is more of your bio. Remember, we even talked about that last week, right? So um again, it get it gets a little, it gets a little tricky. But your artist statement is about your work, right? It's about your work. It's about, um, are you dealing with feminism in your work? Are you, are you dealing with um, abandonment in your work? Are you dealing with tranquility in your work? In your artist bio, there's actually a section that is lists what influences you. Is there a political figure that influences you, you as a person, you as a person? Um, you don't want to put your your writing statement, um, I would say, with anybody else's name because this is really your work. Um, so I, I, I would put that more in your bio than I would in the writing statement. Mm. I think this is good. I have like a little something that happened actually. I was in a... Um, in like a round table mm -hmm. visual artists and we each like went through our bio we were each supposed to present our work mm -hmm. um and we were all from different countries sharing this so we did did this process over a couple different days um and there was a young artist there and so we're all artists so the first thing you expect to see is like your artwork mm -hmm. but after the artist did his bio when he talked about his artwork all he did was actually like talk about all the artists that influence him, which are all major names that everybody would be able to connect to. Mm -hmm. And for like a half hour, we heard more about that, that right. actual artwork. Right. And, then, and then like, a, it got so frustrating to the point where everybody was like, can we just see your artwork? <laughs> please yeah, right. your artwork. Or please tell us about your artwork because you're telling us about everybody else's artwork. So right. I'm reminded of that. And I think it's a really good example because I know even personally, I used to, I thought it was, um maybe appropriate to put that in the statement instead of the bio right i, I don't think so i think that statement has to really yeah be about it, you, your work you, you know it it's does. really the artist bio is about you the writing statement it's about your work yes and that's that's a good way to kind of maybe put that's a great example mm -hmm. um so our next question um says let's say your work follows one type of philosophy but there are specifics in each series. Should there be more than one statement, one general, one more Definitely. Uh, specific? This is a great question. This is a great question. And this this really illustrates the idea of how you, you're an artist, but you, you need to have a folder with writing in it. Yeah, and that's why I keep saying, make that folder and keep everything that you write. So yes, having a general statement, but then you know honing in on uh, 
you know, these five paintings, uh, you know, highlight this philosophical ideal or ideology, you definitely, you definitely would have something like that. I'm just rereading the question. Um, and it, I think it's a great way you said your work follows one type of philosophy, but there are specifics in each series. That illustrates the idea that all the paintings that you make are part of the same family, right? So you're just kind of like honing in on specifics of a few, few works of art. Um, and then having a more general statement for everything. Yes, definitely. Great question. Thank you. Sorry guys, I'm just fixing something in our Zoom here. <sighs> um, Zoom security, we gotta be on top of this. Okay. <laughs> Let me bring back our chat box because I know we had another great question. Um, yeah. Where is that? Oh, okay, this is from Mariah. Um, she asks us, is there a practice that will avoid art speak? She finds it really difficult. Hi, Mariah. Yeah. Hi, Mariah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that that's hard because um, that's like, here's a good example for you. My daughter is um, a scientist, right? And when she talks about her thesis that she's working on, my head spinning right and i have to say to her okay now now you need to speak to me who i don't understand all of this science talk that you're using and all this jargon so now speak normally i think that that's a good practice that you can that you can think about is if you were explaining it to the general public um we 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 are in our like i said we're in our own heads and we know all of these terms um if you, uh, I'm going to answer this also in a different way. Let me back up the bus a little bit. If you, there's a, there's a cliche that we should avoid, right? Back up the bus. But let me go back to um, the lecture that was posted. I gave three examples of bios, excuse me, of art, of artist statement at the very end. And I deliberately did not show you the artist's work. I wanted you to read those statements and get a picture in your mind. Um, so for example, the first one was of a, from a jewelry maker. And that jewelry maker described her jewelry as an accessory and how she wants the people who wear it to be happy and to feel joy. So she didn't use any language at all that had to do with metalwork. She didn't talk about soldering. She didn't talk about bezels. She didn't talk about materials. She didn't talk about different types of, of, of metals, nothing like that. It was more about describing the, the, the joy that people have when they wear that jewelry. So um, that's a good way that that's a good way to think about your artist statement because it's it's not necessarily about um, the material art jargon. It's it's like you're almost selling it in a way. You know, you want people to understand what it's about, but they have to they ha they have to buy into it and they have to believe it. So you have to be truthful. I also want to go back to the artist bio for a minute. I hope this isn't getting confusing or complicated. But in your artist bio, on that checklist, it does talk about materials, right? Like if materials are really important to you and your biography, then that's where you would include materials and that type of language. Um, the writing statement is more about the experience that, that the viewer is going to get when they look at your art. Does that help? Does that, ant like, does that distinguish a little bit more about between the two, I hope? Uh, I hope that answers that. Oh, that was helpful. That was good. Yeah. Um, let me just double check here. I think that might have been our the last one. I think so. No. Yeah, sorry. Of my other. Think, oh, is there a link here, Patty Robinson? Is there a link? Right? Does she have one? Oh yes. Yeah, so she asked for a link for the bio, um, Patty. So I just have to pull it for you from Facebook, and I'll put it up there. Mm -hmm. But also, just know that these videos, <clears throat> excuse me are all on our YouTube. So like, if you just go to the YouTube for one of them, if you pop onto the channel, you're gonna see the other ones as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then the video from today, cause this is live, so it's recording. Um, it'll be available on Facebook. And then in like a week, it'll go up on YouTube too. So you can even rewatch this in case it was like something that we were talking about that you want to mm -hmm. revisit or remember. Um, does anybody else have any other questions they want to pop into the chat box? We actually had someone on, um, Facebook who is watching. Hi Charlotte if you're still there. Um, and she's a performing artist and so I just wanted to remind people I know everybody here is a visual artist from what I can see right yes. So um, the bio is super helpful 
um, for any type of artist, any type of discipline, and any kind of profession where you need a bio, because you need that for almost everything. So that. Um, this is more specific to the arts, but you can definitely take all these tips from Professor Giordano and from the video she's created and just adapt them to the discipline that you're working in. So it's definitely, um, definitely. helpful to you as a performer as well. Definitely. And if uh, you are working in a different discipline, I think I would just take uh, Professor Giordano's example of looking at other artists' bios, right, that are working in the same discipline to see how they're dealing with maybe specific mm -hmm. things that you're trying to describe too. Definitely. Um, I did want to add something else before yes, we move on. Um, I think I can't stress enough too that if you're if you're um, really working on this and you want to work on both of them, you know, kind of you need to have both of them. A lot of what is needed in this right in the artist statement, some of it is reflected in that artist bio video as well, right? There's kind of like things that are th things that are relatable. But the best thing that you can think about is that again, the bio is about you and the artist statement is about your work. And is if you are kind of like, I feel like I still did, I don't know if I answered that question about art speak as well as I could have. Um, making sure that you're understanding that whatever you write about in your artist statement, it's like, it's like if they're never going to see your work, this is a good way to think of it. If someone is never, ever going to see your work, but they can only read that artist statement, what do they need to know about your work? I think that that's the best way to say it. And if you fill that paragraph with a lot of art language and art vocabulary, you're probably not describing the work adequately. You're kind of getting caught up in that language. So keep that in your mind when you have to write the write the statement. Um, it's a, it's a, it could be a substitute. It could be a total substitute. It's like it's like they're opening up your portfolio when they read the, that those paragraphs, whether it's 75, 250, or 500. They're getting words that match up to what's inside that portfolio. It has nothing to do with you as an artist. It's what's inside your portfolio. I think that that's a better way to explain it. Yeah, I think that's great. And I think to the um, suggestion to have other people read your, read your statement in your bio, those are always like the first thing I go to. I try to find well, my, uh, I always go to my husband, so he'll read everything first, but I try to like give it to people who aren't normally reading artist statements and stuff to really get feedback from them. And that kind of kicks art speak out easy too, because mm -hmm. right away they'll be like, ah, what is, you know, that's confusing. Right. <laughs> get rid of that. And then, and then it helps you clean it up a little bit uh, also. And Beth, you know, some of the people who are approving these grants or who sit on these boards, mm -hmm. they're financial backers. You know, they're not always going to be art educators or, or artists themselves as well. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that you're writing for that. And also they're not in the same discipline. Actually, uh, usually, uh, you know, there's different types of disciplines reading. And so like, you know, you could be really, really speaking something specifically to another painter and you're having a dancer read it or, you know, so that's where that, that also helps. Right. Are we still there? Did it right. go out on? Oh, okay, there we are. Yeah, no, <laughs> I saw no, no. all the heads I'm, freeze a little. <laughs> yeah. Um, has yeah, any, does, does anybody have any last questions before we start to wrap up today? I'm going to just check in on our Facebook. Hello, Facebook, if you have a question. Oh, hello, Bartow. It's really <laughs> Sorry. Yes, Professor Giordano? No, I was just going to say it's nice to see some of the same faces from last week. I see yes. some people. Yeah, that's great. They're working on their professional packages. Awesome. <laughs> Um, I so we I don't see any other questions and so I'll just ask one oh, last time if anybody has anything they want to toss out to Professor Giordano. I don't think so. I think we got everything. It was really good. It's very thorough. Professor Giordano did an amazing job on these videos for us. We're so thankful she put them together and we're really thankful to the Patrick Medford Library uh, to help support this program, Pat Chats. Um, and we've talked about a couple different things for Pack Chats, but if you guys have ideas, you can always, or things that you need, that's actually how Pack Chats got started. I had a number of artists asking for help with bios and statements and resume. Um, the artist resume is another important piece of the package, and so we're going to be working on a video and a Q&A for that as well. And then one of my favorite things to talk about is um, actually artwork selection for applications. Right. So we're going to hold a uh, pack chat that's just about that and also related to slide slam 
Mm -hmm. I have a couple people here who have participated in Slides Lab and know what that is. But for those of you who haven't, um, it's an opportunity to speak about your work, but in a very fast pace. So you get five minutes, which means you have to really pare down exactly what you want to say and the exact work that you want to show. Um, we're going to hold a couple of Zoom meetings like this to help you with the application process um, and talk more about what Slide Slam is. But we'll be doing it virtually, so I'm, I'm kind of like softly announcing that to you here. Um, but we received a grant from Suffolk County um, to run this program again. It'll be its fourth year. And we love Slide Slam is awesome. It's to put you as an artist in front of people who are looking to show your work and who have opportunities to offer you. So um, we can kind of do that on a much larger scale actually by doing it virtually, which is pretty cool. So you'll hear more about that and more pack chat soon. You can just check in on Facebook, check our website and feel free to sign up for our newsletter if you don't already get it because we send that out quite often with reminders and you know, what's coming up. Anything else? Any other questions anybody has before we leave the Anything, anything specific? I mean, we do have a few minutes if anyone we has do. any specific User questions. Up. <laughs> What's that? I said, use her up. Yeah, I mean, if you have, like, don't, you know, don't be shy. Like, if you want to say, I, I wrote this and, you mm -hmm. know, does this work or does this make sense? Please, you know, don't hesitate to, to ask. Anybody have one out there? Anybody have Nobody questions? wants to expose. <laughs> Uh, we will also be offering some 20, uh, like 20 minute one on one uh, opportunities to do this with other people too. Um, oh, Christoph has got something for us. Christoph uh, usually <laughs> uh -oh. will step up to the plate. <laughs> Go ahead, Christoph. Okay, so like my, my artist statement I wrote like three years ago, three, four years ago, it hasn't changed very much. Um, and I wonder like if maybe that's like part of the problem with um, just communicating and connecting with people. Um, I have it here <laughs> if you want to read it. Sure. Do you want to pop it in the chat box? Sure. Um, we can use I, it as a live can example. Can I do a share screen with my website? Oh, it's, yes, it's of course. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm sure. It's on the website. Go ahead. Oh, it's, it's disabled. <laughs> What? Oh no, sorry, that's me. I failed. Hold on. Okay, you're ready. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Oh, this is great. Google. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. Uh... Ooh, Kristoff. Nice website. That's another pack chat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so here we here we go. That's 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 it right net right there. I wanted to make it short and concise. Can can I see your work? I mean, I'm kind of doing being contrary to what I said, but I yeah, I don't see that. So okay. Well, oh, I love Carl Jung, man and his symbols. I'm all about that. We just had a huge archetype pack from like oh. from grad school I found in my garage. That's funny. <laughs> I, love that. I should have put it aside. Maybe I still have it. I'll put it aside and give it to you. You may not need it, but. <laughs> While she's reading, I'll just mention, yeah. Christoph okay. is the lead um, artist that started our pack Crick group for us. So, um, Please join us if you're out there and you're looking to just connect with some peers and share your work. So I don't, I mean, for those of those of you who were here last week, there's one thing that jumps out immediately that was in the first do's and don'ts. I don't know if anything, anyone else can catch it. Um, I think I can already just from listening from today. It's the third person use. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, so um, I think what you wrote absolutely relates to your work. I mean, I, I, I see, you know, it's using something like you're totally doing show, don't tell. You're absolutely doing the seeds 
remember I said, I don't know if you were here for the last one, but it's like, you want to give seeds. You don't want to give a big watermelon, right? You want to give all the seeds inside that watermelon. So that's a terrific first statement. Um, uses a psychological theorem developed by Carl Jung called shadow work to examine the unexplored vulnerable side of self, humanity, femininity, and her environment. You have just, you've just, you've just made a picture for us and you've anchored it to Carl Jung, right? You saw my reaction. Ah, Carl Jung. I love Carl Jung. I, I get it. I know where you're going with this. I, I know exactly where you're going. Fantastic. Um, but you want to own this because it's okay. your work. So you see the difference by saying, I use a psychological theorem. My work is gritty and honest. You see the difference? Like when you're doing your artist statement, you're owning it. This is, this is the DNA of your work. When you're talking about your bio, accomplishes, accomplishments that you've had, experiences that you've had, successful endeavors, that's third person. Because there's a humbleness there, right? You're, you're, you're standing at a distance and saying, this person did all of this. But now you're saying, this is my work. My work is gritty, it's honest, it's emotional. And it is. Right? Like, I think you've chosen language that really, really um, is, is very uh, reflective of your work. So, um, I don't know, in rewriting the artist statement, if you feel like it changes, then most definitely add to it. What you could do here, if you feel like you did want to play with your artist statement a little bit, you could add a second paragraph. Right? Okay. You could make it if you wanted to. Like, I understand this is also for a website, so it's nice that it's short. But if you were feeling like you wanted to tweak it at all, you could um, you could add another paragraph. I don't, I don't really think that you have to. Are you worried that you're not getting enough viewers on your website? Is that why you were thinking about being more critical about it? Um, well, it really is like if I if I scroll down and you look at the rest of the body of work, like okay. there are changes and I tend I tend to work in series. Okay. Format. Um, so what I might one of the changes that I would make to the website is also breaking it down into series because right now it's just like an ongoing running mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, portfolio, but breaking it down because I do have statements about each of the series that I think probably should go up mm -hmm. to tell people about them. <laughs> right. Probably. Yeah. Probably. And that's so. Hold on a second. Can you would scroll you, also? Well, I was going to say, before you scroll, would oh, you say sorry. would you say that those first three sentences describe all of your work and then each series is something different? I think that it, it does describe all of my work to a certain degree, like especially when using like Carl Jung, Jung's like sort of like using the self con subconscious and, right. and dreams and things like that. And like that that internal part that kind of, you know, vomits itself out. When, right. whenever it, it really needs to mm -hmm. so that that's absolutely true and I try to you know keep it loose and gritty and honest and emotional because when I don't it looks like garbage <laughs> right well it's forced and it's fake right yeah yeah um what you could do is you can take out you can move that to collect any work you contact like you can take that line out um as to collect any work please con oh and that's where your link is on the contact is yeah. that is that an embedded link? Okay. Yeah. Um, you could you could say I've I have explored these themes in many different series, and then you can say my series have have touched upon blah blah blah. Do you know what I mean? So that could yeah. be your second paragraph, and that's where you could expand upon this and then touch upon themes that you are exploring that you know relate back to the original Carl Jung, but almost like a tree, right? Like it's kind of branching off. And yeah. you can simply state that. You can say, simply say, I, I have further explored these themes in the following series, one which focuses upon blah, 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 another that focuses upon etc. cetera. Do, do you think that would be? Yeah. yeah, I think so. And you know what, on my, on my home page, there is a tiny little, well, not tiny, it seems really long about like this, the, the, re, the most recent series. So I kind of started doing it. Yeah. You write, um, you choose your words well. Thank you. I come from a wordy family. <laughs> <laughs> they're the, they're on the humanity sides of things, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I th I think that um, 
I think you could even write a sentence here, you know, in being further influenced or further examining, you know, the ideals of uh, Carl Jung, the hypoxia, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, hibernation series, you know, examines this relationship between, because it, it, you see what I mean about them being cousins with each other, right? Yeah. Like, mm. you, your your work is connected to, to, it, to you. Your work is connected yeah. to you. So um, you could add a sentence here that relates it back to the to the young the overarching young themes that arrive in your that are apparent in your work, which is anxiety, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, I. I uh, if you can go back, can you go back to that other first page that we were just on? Sure. And scroll sure. down because you were saying that you had different work. If you keep you like you have it all just running in here is that what you were yeah. saying yeah yeah so it it kind of just it kind of runs together yeah. and i think maybe uh-huh right maybe i don't need to have it right be more like selective a, yeah i don't i don't need to have so much of a um i guess like an instagram feed yes yes I, that's how it reads i was gonna say that you know and that's it i will tell you i i remember going through this myself and i don't know if other artists on here are going to agree or disagree but when we're when we're young and when we're new we show everything mm -hmm. yeah and then as we kind of cultivate your style you become a little more mature you can show three or four things that speak to your body of work so yeah, I think editing down some of, I think you're seeing a disconnect between the images that you're showing and what you have written. Right. And, and that's, you follow your instincts on that. Yeah, I would take some of those down. You know, web design is a whole nother thing. Maybe that's another series that we, you know, that we need to kind of. Yes, the artist on. website is a pack chat and it'll actually talk a lot about breaking, doing something like this where you, you're showing so many different bodies of work and breaking mm -hmm. them down. So, you yep. know, really clearly um, different and then writing the short statements that that can go with them yeah because that is a whole different kind of writing right like like artists didn't have websites previously so the artist statement almost had a had a little bit of a different function and we now have to update our writing for these web pages and we have to modify the statement to use it on these web pages so that might be breaking down one longer statement under three different tabs you know what I mean? Yeah. Three different drop down menus too. Yeah. And sometimes it's also like those drop down menus. I had worked with an artist and we kind of totally reorganized what we, what he had on that top bar because it didn't really relate properly to what he had within within the website. So yeah, Beth, we probably should maybe think about yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. I think it's also really difficult too if you work in different mediums. So, yes. um, you know, like I, I have it with my website too, but I have something similar where I have like an overarching statement that kind of fits always the type of work I'm making. Mm -hmm. And then each body of work has its own statement. Right. I suck at write. Well, I take really I long, I don't, I'm not horrible at writing, but I take a really long time to write. <laughs> I, took, I took it back. Um, so I really try to seek advice from other people who are much better at it than I am. And I have a couple of people who I've worked with over the course of at least like 15 years now that mm -hmm. I can go to and they can really help me write about my work. So when I'm having a show, I go to them and things like that. And so, um, you know, I barter for that. <laughs> so you can, like, you can try that if you have an, a, a writing friend and maybe you can't, you know, pay them with money, you can barter. They're usually really happy to trade for artwork. So um, right. it's like another suggestion too, because not everybody's great at writing. So yeah. going through all of this, you could really have a hard time and you can just work with some friends that mm -hmm. understand your work and can help you um, say what you're trying to say better. Definitely. I love the way Sasha writes, so uh, <laughs> it's next <laughs> on my list to book, but <laughs> I think it's really helpful to have that. So um, we have in the chat, uh, Professor Giordano, Patty actually popped up okay. her first brain drain. <laughs> I like brain drain. That's another yeah. way. I think it's really, um, Professor Giordano said this a couple times today, and it's when you're writing, and this goes for the bio, the statement, whatever you're writing, you like, you'll pop out these great sentences and then sometimes not use it for that specific thing you're writing, but just make sure you keep everything. I have stuff that I've kept 15 plus years mm -hmm. and I'll be like, wait a minute, I wrote that sentence. <laughs> Yes. Ten yes. years ago, and it's gonna work now. So I go and pull it and put it back. 
and I have so many different versions of these things, but yeah. it's really easy. It's really good to keep all of that little bits of writing. So. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I just found I just found my application to graduate school, and I have, ah! I read that, and I said I still believe that it's changed. Yeah, like, it changed, but but to reread that and be like, well, that was me of twenty years ago. Like I was right. Yeah, that got it. It's changed. I've added things along the way, but yeah, um, but yeah, I think that that's really good. What Patty wrote. Um, And Patty, if you want to, if you want to share your screen and show your work, you can. Patty, you there? Bueller? I'm just kidding. See now, I know. I don't know. I don't know if she's still here. Um, see, she did mention material, and that's good. So you see, sometimes it works, and sometimes you have to kind of go with your instincts. It might not have on 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 Kristoff's. She didn't need to mention material because what drives her is that collective consciousness, those ideas that relate back to Jung, but. Patty's work is, yeah, and I just yeah. knowing Patty's work, I think that sounds great, Patty. I don't think yeah. that's brain draining at all. It's no. Great. It, like, really makes sense, and from hearing you talk about your work also, so. If you want to pop up pictures, Patty, you can. Oh, uh, yeah, there she goes. <laughs> She's got a nice website. Instagram. Hello, Facebook friends. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Don't want to forget them out there. Right. I like that they're tuning in. I like that we have like different channels going. I know. It's so funny. I'm glad it works. Got a whole nother group out there watching. Mm -hmm. Oh. I saw the cut paper and then it went away. Patty, you're a tab keeper like I am. Mm-hmm. I'm always like 50 tabs open. And then if my family goes on my computer, they're like, why mm -hmm. do you have all these tabs open? And I'm always like, close nothing. Close yeah. nothing. I'm like, yeah. who dare? Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm Oh, wow. Can you scroll up so I can see what you have written in blue? That's great. That's a great sentence. I love these. Yeah. And this is paper or this is paper and paint? Do you know, Beth? It's collage, paper, paint. Those are, they're really beautiful. Right, Patty? That's the best way to explain it. See, and I think what you wrote is really reflective of your work because these feel like they feel um automatic and that's abex right like they feel like you are like you said that you do it in one sitting right isn't that what you just wrote yes she and did. you can you can feel the spontaneity in these pieces so you see what i mean how the language is is really so it, you have to be really selective but how that really does drive these pieces I think too, you know, a lot of these applications, they have a word count, um, but just because there's a word count doesn't mean you have to use them all. And that was like, I used to always think you had to max out the word count. Even with grant applications, it doesn't mean more words are right. better. Sometimes less there's is more. exactly what you need. If it's saying what you need to say, then don't worry about the word count. Yeah. And especially if you're influenced by Bauhaus, then definitely less is more, right? It's, 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 it's kinda, yeah, I think that's, I think that, that those are two really, really great examples of how successful, um, those are, those are successful writing statements. Again, if you're questioning your writing statement, it, both of you, you could, I see there's, oh, I thought something else, there was another question. You both could, you could add another paragraph, like that might be what you're feeling, or your body of work might be going in another direction, so you need to kind of write a, write, uh, write a new artist statement that um, is more specific to some of those new pieces. Um, because I, I don't think, I, I'm trying to think how many words those bo you both have here. Patty, do you use a separate statement for the pieces that have like magazine collage in them? I'm just curious. Yes. 
Yeah. So she has a couple different bodies. She has a couple different you can probably bodies. see it on your website, right? If uh, if you can, just pop pop your um, website into the chat box, and then that way people can um, can go check it out. I and that was like a question I knew the answer to, but I thought it would be good yeah. for people to uh, to see because it's a great example. It's always yeah. nice to reference other people's. It is. Oh, it, it really is. Because you, like I said, you can read some of them and be like, mm mm, that, yeah. these are both really nice examples of how the words are married to the pieces. And again, if you're either one of you are looking to kind of update it or critique it, it could be, it could be adding that second paragraph too, you know? Um, I see you don't mention color, Patty. So I'm thinking it's really more process and material and spontaneity that influences you. Um, but you could add something about your color choice or that might be totally random too. I don't know. Oh, there she added her link. Christoph, can you put yours in as well? In case anybody wants to visit it. Thank you. Terrific. Mid-century colors always. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> I'm just checking our Facebook. Hi, Eileen Palmer. Thanks for watching. <laughs> got a whole little group out there. Thank you so much, Professor Giordano. Oh, my pleasure. I just want to say one thing, Patty, you could include that. You could say something about that mid-century because that's, you could add that if you wanted to. One or, you know, don't you, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think what you have written here is really good, but that mid-century influence is not mentioned in here at all, right? It's also just a little phrase that if you weren't looking at her work and you read that, you would be like, oh. <laughs> yes, because it, you have it on your, yeah, you have it on your website and you just mentioned it again. So that's important to you. I would put a sentence, you know, seamlessly in there with like that. <laughs> Yeah. Great. And um, okay. Christoph also added her link in case you want to visit that, guys. I can uh, pop these links on our Facebook um, live session also. I'm going to say goodbye to our Facebook friends because I'm going to take this off of the live feed. And I just want to thank Professor Giordano for all her awesome advice today. We're so happy to have her. Thank She'll you. Be back My pleasure. With another one for us soon. <laughs> Um, our next, <laughs> our next focused video um, will be about creating an artist resume, so you can start thinking about that. Um, we always get a lot of questions about that, and even having one, just like refreshing it, what should it look like now? You know, mm -hmm. all those types of questions you may have. Make sure you write them down and bring them with you to the Q and A, because we'll use the same format where we have a video you could watch and then come in for the Q and A. Some of the other things we talked about, like the website, um, we're going to do some social media stuff and choosing, um, choosing artwork, creating bodies of bodies of work, or um, very specifically when you're trying to choose work for an application, the best way to go about it, um, and tips for that. We're going to do those more like these live Q sessions. Those are not videos, so uh, just so you kind of know what's coming. Mm -hmm. um, and again, if you have any suggestions for things that you need. Uh, things that you want us to address for you in pack chats, um, you can send them to info at patchogarts.org and feel free to Facebook us too. We always check that if you have any comments or questions. Um, and last but not least, if you love these videos and you want to see them coming and you feel inclined to donate, you can. Uh, patchogarts.org. And...